Hello and welcome to another edition of Washington Spotlight. Our subject today, should wiretapping be legalized? Our guests for today are two prominent members of the Congress, Senator Wayne Morse of Oregon, an independent, and Congressman Kenneth Keating of New York State, a Republican. And they are both very familiar with this pressing problem of whether or not the tapping of private telephone conversation shall be legalized. You know, it's very easy to do with just two, these two little clips attached to the lead-in wire to your telephone to listen in on anyone's private conversation. We're going to ask each of our guests to speak first on what their views are on the legalization of wiretapping. Congressman Keating, will you tell us how you feel about this subject? Well, Mr. Childs, I agree with President Eisenhower and Attorney General Brownell that the time has come when we must pass some legislation in this field. The invasion of privacy is repugnant to all Americans, and properly so. But after all, in the case of searches and seizures, under proper regulations, we do permit it. Uh, it is necessary, it seems to me, in the case of crimes involving the national security, like treason, sabotage, espionage, and so on, to pass legislation in this field. Now, when it comes to the type of legislation which is to be adopted, uh, rather naturally, I favor a bill of which I'm the author, which has already passed uh, the subcommittee of the House Judiciary Committee, which requires going to a court to get a court order in order to intercept communications uh, in these limited class of cases, and it also imposes serious criminal penalties in the case of illegal wiretapping, not in accordance with the rather confined terms of the bill. In other words, limited wiretapping. That's right. Thank you, Congressman Keating. And now, Senator Morris, what is your view about legalizing wiretapping? Well, in this short program, I'm going to base my opposition to any proposal to legalize wiretapping on the basis of language and statements of policy already contained in United States Supreme Court decisions. I want to make very clear some of the languages from dissenting opinions, some from majority opinions, although I think the first language which I shall use from a dissenting opinion it would very likely be majority language if the similar case were before the Supreme Court today. Of course, in the famous Olmstead case in 1928, the Supreme Court, by a five to four decision, ruled that wiretapping did not violate the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, the Fourth relating to searches and seizures, and the Fifth, of course, to self-incrimination. But a great dissent was written. In fact, uh, three great dissenting judges dissented in that case, Holmes and Stone and Brandeis. And uh, the great Holmes said in this decision, and I read from page 470, it also is desirable that the government should not itself foster and pay for other crimes when they are the means by which the evidence is to be obtained. In my judgment, it's difficult for me to escape the fact that when government officials engage in wiretapping, they are engaging in a form of criminal conduct, and I don't think that we should, should impose it upon the American people because it is a serious violation, in my judgment, of the precious right of privacy the right to keep the American home, the free man's castle. But now listen to Brandeis in his dissent in this famous Olmstead case. He said, the evil incident to invasion of the privacy of the telephone is far greater than that involved in tampering with the mails. Whenever a telephone line is tapped, the privacy of the persons at both ends of the line is invaded, and all conversations between them upon any subject, and although proper, confidential, and privileged, may be overheard. Moreover, the tapping of one man's telephone line involves the tapping of the telephone of every other person whom he may call or who may call him as a means of espionage, writs of assistance, and general warrants are but puny instruments of tyranny and oppression when compared with wiretapping. And if you'll permit, because I'll simply use it later in the program, let me read another sentence or two from that great dissent of Brandeis. He said, the protection guaranteed by the amendments is much broader in scope. The makers of our Constitution undertook to secure conditions favorable to the pursuit of happiness. They recognized the significance of man's spiritual nature, of his feelings, and of his intellect. They knew that only part of the pain, pleasure, and satisfactions of life 
are found in material things. And I, I close this summary simply by saying, Mr. Childs and Congressman, that I cannot escape the fact that I care not what safeguards you seek to, to surround your bill with. The fact is that you are invading the privacy of the American home without the homeowner knowing of the invasion. I'd like to ask you, Congressman Keating, about this matter of safeguards, particularly with respect to your bill. Well, in the first place, uh, uh, I, my feeling is, and nobody can tell, that Justices Holmes and Brandeis, great men as they were, facing the problem as of today with the espionage and sabotage and treason that's been going on in this country, that they would uh, not oppose such a measure as uh, has been passed through our committee. They were dealing with the present situation without any legislation. And uh, I agree that uh, wiretapping has in many instances been carried too far, not only by government officials, but by private individuals. Uh, but we are here dealing, I must emphatically point out, uh, with only those who are engaged or alleged to be engaged in, in crimes against our country. And in order to ob obtain a wiretap under the terms of this bill, a court must be satisfied by affidavit that uh, a crime has been or is about to be committed and that the evidence uh, will be uh, material to, to a controversy. Now, uh, uh, it also uh, provides that the Attorney General shall lay down rules uh, to govern the thing. Of course, this bill does not go as far. It's rather interesting. I was on a program not long ago with a Democratic congressman from Oklahoma, who opposes my bill because it goes too far. But what you are saying, in effect, is that the element of communist infiltration has made the change that makes this inevitable. That's right. I'd like I mean, to ask the Senator to, to comment, hit a midway ground. comment on this element of well, communist uh, uh, espionage and infiltration well, as a new element in American uh, life. Let me say Congressman Keating doesn't abhor communism any more than the Senator from Oregon. But I don't think you need to violate the privacy of the American home in order to detect subversive and communist activities in the United States. May I, I ask think, what I think the FBI, uh, I think your military uh, secret service are doing a remarkably good job in regard to detecting the cells of communism in the country. But I wouldn't give to them wiretapping power. But what I'd about take the provision of going into the court? as his bill provides. Well, I say most respectfully, it's no protection at all. You see, it's not an analogous case to search and seizure. When you go into the co court to get court authorization for search and seizure, you have to specify what you're after. But you see, when you go into the court to get an order uh, authorizing you to wiretap your home or mine or that of 160 million other Americans, the person that is being tapped hasn't the slightest idea is being tapped. All of the intimate conversations of American home life are going to be taken down. Now, let me tell you, in this fight for freedom, we've always had to be on guard against police tyranny. Police tyranny and police protection are quite different things. And in the enforcement of the criminal law in this country, if you'll study it, there have been these periodic times when police have adopted tyrannical third-degree methods, blackmailing tactics, and you give to the police, under court order or without a court order, the power to take down all the conversations in a free man's home, and you open up a terrible, vicious what about cycle of your tyranny. your view of this now protection, I, the safeguard? I point out to you, Mr. Childs, that your home, Senator Morse's home and my home, are not going to be tapped under this bill. We are here and nor any of the homes of the patriotic Americans watching this program. The homes that, that are going to be tapped are those where there is reasonable cause to believe that a crime has been or is about to be committed, I'm quoting from the language, and that the communications contain information which would assist in the conduct of such investigations. Do you have no check on the police? You have no check on the court. Where is the judge that's going to deny a writ to proceed with wiretapping if the police or your law enforcement officers ask for it. There'll be few and far between. And the same argument, may I say, was made at the time that the illegal search and seizure problem was before the courts. And our Supreme Court pointed out there, you can't draw the distinction between the guilty and the not guilty. 
And also, don't forget well, the alien... Well, you do a search warrant, though, don't you? No, no, you don't. You don't know whether the person's guilty or not. You go in to see whether or not he is, but you go in for but something that specific... The same? For but something if... specific that has to be mentioned in the search warrant, and you've got your notice. But Here, the... this is all secretive. If, in a cor if you can go to a court and get an order to enter a man's home and search for something, as you can in a much wider class of cases than this, then certainly it is not an undue invasion of privacy in a limited class of cases when you're after a traitor to uh, get a court order for uh, a tapping of his telephone line. I don't, I'm not take this concerned search about that. Let me take this search Gentlemen, I, sorry to have to break in here. Our time has all too quickly come to an end. Thank you, Congressman Keating, and you, Senator Morris, for this most interesting discussion of the grave problem of legal wiretapping.